everyone. This is just a quick video to show you how to use some of the new books that are going to be coming home with the boys and girls. Um, they're part of the Read Write Ink scheme, which is the phonics scheme that we use in school. And these books are almost identical to the structure and the layout that we use in your child's phonics lesson. We will also make sure that the book that gets sent home is at the exact same colour level as the phonics books that they are reading in their phonics lessons with their teachers. These books will be an addition to the books that the children already bring home, um, although they will be a slightly different colour, which I will explain in more detail in another video. But for now, I'm going to show you how to use these books and show you how we teach these in our phonics lessons so that you can mirror that at home with your child. So first of all, it's always really important that you take a look at the front cover with your child and talk about what they think is happening. It's a good opportunity to make predictions about what they think might happen in the text. And it's also really important to draw attention to the title of the book and talk about that. But sometimes children will just flick straight on and completely forget about that. So making sure that we always read the title with the child. So Scruffy Ted gets lost. Now, as soon as we open the book, again, sometimes it's really easy to miss all this information. But for us, particularly as it mirrors our phonics lessons, it's really important that you go through all this bit with your child. Now, hopefully you would have seen um, a post that's been sent out on Seesaw that talks about all the different language that we use in our phonics lessons. But two of the real key things are the use of green words and red words. Green words, when we talk to the children about these words, means words that they can use their sounds to help sound out. So they should be able to decode and read those words. Red words are a little bit different. These words are words that can't be sounded out. They use unusual combinations of letters that they can't use their Fred talk to help them to read. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you go through the red words and the green words with your child, because these words here are the ones that are gonna be focused on in the text. Now, if they've already had a go at sounding them out first, it means that they will be more fluid and reading at a better pace when they go through the book. So when a child is reading this, usually they'll work in pairs in their phonics lesson, and one person will point and one person will read. Unfortunately, Mr. Hammond didn't feel like doing reading with me today, so I will show you how to point and sound out and read as well. So as you're doing this with your child, I would expect them to break down the word into the individual sounds. So for example, this first word, they would read as m, e, g, meg. We call that Fred talk. Every time they break a word down into each individual sounds, we are using our Fred talk. The second one, we will break down into l, i, f, t, s, lifts, lifts. The next one, now here is a little line. I'm not sure if you can see, let me bring that a little bit closer. You can see it's actually underlined and that's telling us that there is something called a special friend in this word. So the children should begin to start to spot these within their words before they go on to Fred talk. So they'll look at this word and say, oh, there is a special friend there. That N and the K, when they're together, make the unk sound. So when they see those letters together, they should blend them together rather than saying them as individual sounds. So this word will be read b, l, a, n, k, e, t, blanket. The next one, you can see again, there's an underline there, which means there are special friends in this word, the F and the F together, making the long f sound. I'm going to use my Fred talk. Now I've spotted my special friends. Uh, f, fluff. Next one, spotting those special friends. I can see them there again. K, I, t, e, n, kitten. And the last one, no special friends in there. B, a, s, k, e, t, basket. So once you have used your Fred talk to read all these words, you might want to get your child to go back and try them again because they might start to be able to do something called Fred in their head, which means not saying the sounds out loud and saying them in their head, which in turn speeds up the reading process. So if they go back, you shouldn't hear them sounding out when they Fred in their head and be able to read the words much quicker. Meg lifts. 
blanket, fluff, kitten, basket. Then you can move on to your red words. Now these words you cannot sound out. We usually say at school, you can't fred a red. So all the children have to be able to do here is recognise these words on sight. Now, if you recognise that these children, actually some of your children aren't recognising some of these words, then that might be something that you can carry on focusing with them at home by making some flashcards and just showing them them regularly so that they recognise them on sight. So the children should be able to read these like this. I, you, the, he, all, I've. And that is how we use the first part of this book. I'm now going to move on to the second part of the book and show you how to read the main content. Again, it's always worthwhile getting your child to use their sounds to read the title here in the book. So they may recognise the words on site, but if they don't, it's okay for them to sound out. Try and encourage your child at this point, on these pink books in particular, to get them to point to the words as they read. So, sk, r, o, f, e. Scruffy, oh, I know this word on sight, Ted, gets, lost, lost. Scruffy Ted gets lost. Now, as a parent, it's always worth you going back and reading the full sentence for your child to ensure that they are getting to understand the meaning of what's happening in the book. It can be hard work trying to sound out lots and lots of words and therefore the meaning can sometimes be lost. Now you'll notice in the text that anything that is a red word that we looked at earlier is actually coloured in red, which is really, really helpful because it helps you to prompt your child and say, remember, you can't use your Fred talk. On all the other words in this book, they should be able to use their Fred talk to be able to sound out those words. So I'll show you how I would expect a child to track and follow a few of these pages, maybe sometimes sounding out, sometimes using their thread in their head. What I always encourage children to do is have a look at the whole word first, because sometimes them sounding out with their thread talk in every single word can make it so that the reading becomes very stilted, very jolted, and the pace slows down. When actually, if they were to just stop and look at the whole word first, they might recognise that word and not need to use their thread talk at all. So I will model it for you and show you how a child may need to use their Fred talk for some words and how they won't for others. So, I have lost, lost, scruffy, scruffy, Ted, Meg, Meg tells Gran, will you help help now as an adult it might be worth you then going back and repeating it i have lost scruffy ted meg tells gran will you help if you model it and show them how to read it with more pace and fluency and expression it's going to help your child with their help with their fluency pace and expression as well so back to how the child might read it, tracking with that finger. Gran tips up a basket. basket. Meg, ch oh, there's some special friends and some more special friends here. Ch -e -k -s checks the basket. Now your child hopefully will start to recognise that they've read that word here and that word here. So again, the pace will begin to increase. Also make sure any words that your child sounds out, they go back and say the whole word. So for example, when I sounded out ch, ek, s, it's always important for the child to then blend the whole word checks. Oh, now I know this word because this has come up quite a few times in the book. Scruffy Ted is not in the basket. It is filled with st -uff stuff. Now again as an adult I might go back and read that for my child. Gran tips up a basket. Meg checks the basket. 
Scruffy Ted is not in the basket. It is filled with stuff. Now, you'll carry on reading the book in the same way until you get to the end, which is when we get to this part. Here's the final part of the book and how to use it with your child. So allowing your child time to retell the story is really, really important because it helps with their verbalization. It helps them to be able to order and sequence their ideas and also show you that they've understood what has happened in the text. And it says here to take turns retelling the story with your child. So you might want to have a go first using the pictures, followed by your child copying you. You might want to use language like first, next, then, after that, finally, to help your child to retell. You might even want to encourage them to include some interesting vocabulary in there to describe what's happening in the pictures. And then last of all is this bit at the back, questions to chat about. So this gives you an idea of the sort of questions that you can be asking your child once they have read the story. It might ask you to read the child, read the questions aloud to your child rather than you, uh, rather than your child actually reading them for themselves. The words are usually harder than the ones that they can do for themselves. And the importance with this bit is about them being able to comprehend, understand exactly what it is that they've read. So for example, the first question says, who does Meg ask to help her find Scruffy Ted? And it tells you which page to go back to. Now it's great if your child has remembered this, but actually what I would encourage you to do, which is what we do in our reading sessions at school, is something called find it, prove it. So we know the answer to this question, who does Meg ask to help her find Scruffy Ted, is on page four to five. So I'm going to go to page four to five, and then I'm going to find the answer. Usually it's going to mean me having to go back and read it because I've got to find the answer and prove it by pointing to it with my finger. I have lost Scruffy Ted, Meg tells Graham. Will you help? So I might choose to point to the picture because I can see that Meg is pulling on Gran's dress to ask her to help. I might choose to point over here because this is who she's telling that she's lost and who she's therefore asking to help. It's a really important skill that the children can use the text that they've read to help them find the answers. So like I say, I would encourage you to go back and get the child to find it, prove it in the text. Have a look at another question on page six. What does Gran pick up from Fluff the kitten's bed? So again, we go to page six. I might have to read to find the answer. Gran picks up a blanket from Fluff the kitten's bed. Oh, so I found the answer there. So I'm going to find it, prove it by pointing to it. And you'll go through all the questions in the book, repeating it in the same way. Now you might not choose to do these questions straight away because we will encourage you to read this book with your child a few times before you possibly answer the questions. These books will be given out at the start of the week and we will change them again the following week. It's not about your child reading them once and then being finished. It's about them building on the fluency and expression and understanding as they read. And the only way they're going to be able to do that is by reading the text at least three times. That's how many times we do it with our children in school in their phonics lessons. I hope it's been of some help and um, I'm going to have a go at doing some other videos with some other books. Thank you.